Adriano, welcome to the Astro Ben podcast. How are you? Very fine. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, it's an honor to chat to you. So let's dive straight in. What initially inspired you to co-found the Space Renaissance International or SRI? Okay, it's a long story, but I will try to make it short. I started to to think about, uh, okay, well, I always thought about uh, humanity, you know, the, 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 the general, our, our species, let me say, uh, since when I started to, to think about, uh, let me say, political and ideological things uh, and so on in the, when, I, when I was in, a, in my high school, <laughs> let me say. And in, uh, in the 80s, after uh, several experiences uh, with politics, uh, with uh, trade unions, with yeah, a lot of uh, let me say social experiences because the, it was uh, you know the the sixties, the sixties eh? and seventies. So this kind of movements were very, very alive, and uh, and uh, I was part of these movements. And uh, but in the eighties, I I started to think that. Uh, Politics was not enough because uh, the, uh, there was a, a, a lack of philosophy, philosophical elaboration. Mm. So I started to think that the politics uh, without uh, the fundaments, uh, deep uh, uh, philosophical fundaments cannot work. And uh, uh, so I started to think about uh, the future of humanity, the problems of humanity and so on. I understood that... Uh, the resources of this planet cannot be enough forever for any number of us. Uh, so I quickly arrived in the early 90s uh, to think that the space frontier uh, is fundamental to pass the frontier and to, to start expanding outside because uh, uh, yeah, the solar system has a lot of uh, resources for us. And uh, uh, we just d have to decide to move and to to complete the Copernican revolution and go outside and start uh, taking profit of the immense uh, uh, resources and energy uh, of the solar system. Uh, that's why I uh, I started to connect with other people in the world that. Uh, because it was the beginning of the internet, you know. So uh, I had started to I started to 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 go to the International Astronautical Federation congresses, where I met uh, some other crazy people, visionaries like me, like uh, Patrick Collins, just to say one. Patrick Collins is a, a an English uh, professor of economics that. Uh, is uh, uh, in Japan since uh, since the past century, and uh, and other 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 people that we started to discuss via email and uh, making uh, our things. And so in two thousand eight, we made uh, a, a convention organized by Technologies of the Frontier. It was my own uh, webzine. And uh, Space Future was the, the webzine of uh, Patrick Collins. So we made it in, in the, in, uh, on the lake, uh, on, the, on, on the Lago Maggiore in Italia. And uh, we started to play with this concept of space resistance with, because we, we, uh, we were saying that uh, uh, nowadays uh, other Medici family would be needed, like the, the historic uh, Medici family that uh, sponsored the Renaissance, uh, historic Renaissance in, in the 15th century. And we say that uh, a Renaissance nowadays can only be in space because uh, on, on Earth uh, th there are not, no, no more resources, no more environment available because uh, everything we make to develop on Earth mm. we waste, uh, further waste the uh, environment. Therefore, we have to move outside. That's that's the, the concept, basically. That uh, and the space renaissance was born in in, uh, in two thousand eight, 
and then we started to we incorporated the association in 2010 after writing a manifesto philosophical manifesto and uh, yeah we are here after uh, how many 16 years now and uh, yeah i think space on essence is uh now renowned in the space community at least but our goal is to be known uh, uh, outside the space community because uh, we don't need to, co to convince uh, the space activists. We need to convince uh, the people that doesn't, don't understand the, the urgence of starting to expand in, in, outside in the outer space. So this is more or less the history so far. Exactly. Well, it's a very exciting first chapter. Um, and I agree, part of the trouble is you're trying to get vast numbers of people to see space as the answer to the world's problems so what about the vision of the space renaissance manifesto is inspirational to people you know why why should people consider space as the answer and uh you know what what, what have you how how has it felt like trying to get people to to, to prioritize space when they're so preoccupied with their day-to-day -day lives? Uh, well, uh, I think the, the, the main problems, I think before, before we will have an environmental collapse that we don't know if it will happen, when it will happen and, and uh, how it will be, I believe the real risk is a social collapse. Because mm. uh, uh, there are so many people that uh, don't have a future. Let's think about the poor people of the of the uh, develop so-called developing countries. But if they will develop, reaching our same level of uh, uh, lifestyle, uh, the environment will collapse because. Uh, uh, there are not enough resources, and and uh, if if we have uh, an industrial development everywhere, then it it will be a big problem for for environment of Earth. And industrial development is fundamental, is key uh, for for the social growth. You don't have any social lift. If you don't have industrial development, because uh, there there will be not enough, never will be enough jobs, never will be enough business opportunities, and uh, uh, startups uh, will probably uh, have birth and die, because mm. there will be no market. So the problem is that we need for the growth, for such a growth, we need industrial and economical growth, and. So that this this is the real uh, uh, reason why we have now uh, such a troubled uh, we are experiencing such a troubled time with wars wars blasting in in, in Europe that uh, that's a very uh, shocking thing for for us Europeans maybe from from America is not that evident. But if you sit here in Italy or France or Germany, you you will feel this thing of the war at a few kilometer, few kilometers distance in Ukraine and in Gaza, because uh, yeah, these are the the two big fires that can detonate something something bigger, and uh, and that will be uh, the, the trigger of a possible so, uh, global society collapse. So uh, we, we, we think that starting before 2030 to, to, to make some meaningful steps toward the civilian space development is fundamental to reignite the hope in the future, to inspire youngs to restart uh, working for the future because uh, there, there will be uh, awareness that the future is possible in the cislunar space and and behind of course but to do that mm. 
we need to make a few meaningful steps. That is, start working for life protection in space. Start working on uh, simulated gravity. Because if, 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 if we don't have, if we have to pass from space exploration to space settlement, protection of life is key. It becomes mm. the real priority. Real priority is not to reach Mars. Real priority is to start making a rotating infrastructure in, in Earth orbit, a small one, a demonstrator, if you like, to start working, to start understanding how our uh, biology react to a simulated gravity. We know we, we, we are experimenting 60 years uh, on microgravity. That's enough, I think. <laughs> if we keep on, if we keep on, uh, stick on, on uh, still experimenting on microgravity, I, I, I think that's a, a, a bad attitude toward the poor astronauts. We want to torture them, to keep on torturing them. And, and uh, I, I, I think you, you have read, you have read the, the book Endurance by Scott Kelly. So you know what yes. I'm, what I'm yes. talking about. So, okay. But, yeah, so you, you asked to me how we think to do to talk to the people. Yeah, so we have to, we have to, to, to say these simple things to the people that I just said uh, now. And we think that the United Nations is important for this because, uh, uh, yeah, we are working to add an 18 SDG to the 17 sustainable development goals of the UN 2030 agenda. Because we think that that is an important vehicle to bring this discussion in the public arena, in the normal political discussion space. Civilian space development should be inside the governmental uh, discussion, the, 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 uh, the, the proposal, the political proposal that the parties make to their voters, possible voters, yeah, to explain why we have to start expanding outside. That's important. And I, and and I, that's part of the reason I really wanted to talk to you because I think it's a fantastic idea, and um, I'll, I'll put in the show notes a link to the sustainable development goals so people can check them out. But my question would be. Doesn't space kind of space could be applied to all of the existing SDGs? You know, for instance, one of them is innovation and infrastructure, which obviously could be uh, applied in a big way to the space economy. You know, good jobs and economic growth. You know, again, the SDG could apply. So, in your opinion, why does why does space need its own uh, its own SDG? Is that more for the United Nations or is it more for the general public to conceptualize the, the subject? Yeah, definitely it's for the general public. The use, utility is for the general public. Because if you look, if you read 17 SDGs, there are no reference to space. And that's okay. We can also understand that the, the uh, 17 SDGs were issued in 2015. So the space economy was not rising so important uh, how it is now. What did happen in 2015? 2015, SpaceX started to uh, to work with reusable rockets. And that's the key factor that is uh, downsizing, already downsized the cost of any launch and for this reason, SpaceX is now the uh, market leader for the launches in the uh, in the world, with seventy percent about of the market of the world market. And the space economy is growing very much more quickly than what the uh, foreseen were, even only two or three years ago, because uh, they they thought that. Uh, uh, half uh, uh, 500 billion would be reached in 2030 and more, but we are 500 billion uh, is the, the current uh, figure. 
of the space economy. Mm. <clears throat> and we can think that when the when a, the, um, the Starship will be fully operative, so a fully reusable uh, vehicle, the cost of the launch will decrease further, reaching about hundred dollars a kilogram. Now is more than thousand, but just a few years ago it was forty thousand dollars per kilogram. Mm. So it's a, it's a real revolution what is uh, what happened and what is happening. However, so we can understand that maybe the UN couldn't make this for 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 forecast in 2015, but in 2021. Another agenda was issued, and it is the Space 2030 Agenda. It was issued by COPOS, the UN Committee for the Peaceful Uses of Outer Space. And if you read it, we are, okay, we have begun to make a critical review of that agenda. If you read it, you will see that there's no mention of space settlement. All the agenda only concern the use of space technology for Earth. That's important, of course. I don't. I, we don't say that it's not important because uh, all these technologies are present in our life, uh, everyday life, and, uh, and they are key for our everyday. Let's think about the GPS, about the communication, about the, 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 the internet in, in itself, and uh, the the remediation of natural disasters and okay we can we can make a list of the very useful space technologies for earth but what we are talking about is to, is the need to start developing outside mm. let's let's only think about the the problem of the uh, energy power supply electrical energy yeah the 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 so-called green transition uh, predicts to uh, to pass to uh, to renewable uh, energy sources and to decrease the the global consumption of energy. The problem now that is admitted also from the, the, the very supporter of, of these uh, strategies is that the renewable energy uh, sources are growing. They are growing very much, but the, the traditional energy uh, sources are growing too. Mm. So there is no replacement they are growing both because the energy demand is growing and is growing very much because we have artificial intelligence, supercomputers that requires a lot of energy. We have electronic money that requires a lot of energy. We have uh, electrical mobility, electrical cars that require uh, very much more electrical uh, energy. And not only because we have also all the problems with electrical cars, that is the <clears throat> the battery uh, wasting and all these kind of things, and and the, and the rare and the rare uh, rare uh, earths that are needed to to build them and to build electronics in general, and the rare birds, uh, rare earths uh, on Earth are becoming a new reason for resource wars yeah because everyone is fighting to to put the hand on the I, I, and again do you do you think space is part of the answer to that because there's so much resources in space there should be an abundance Definitely. of everything we need the rare earths yeah. are very abundant in space on the on the moon on the asteroids and so on so uh, we can do anything else Developing civilian space development is an obligation, is not an option. If we don't, uh, really we don't have a future. As, as the civilization, maybe the species will survive in some way, but the civilization has no future. Because uh, yeah, I fear I fear that may be true. I suppose the only 
the only thing I would question is the the time scale on these things because you know as you said in 2015 reusable rocketry did not exist but that's only nine years ago and when it comes to humanity becoming a multi-planetary species and yeah. you know we're, we're looking at it through a microscope in time so you know why do we need to panic now you know it's 2025 next year um and you're 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 hosting a, a workshop yeah. next month which yeah. i i will be involved in yeah. which i'm excited by um which which highlights how 2025 is a crucial year for the UN yeah, 2030 definitely. agenda. Because 2025, so. there will be a review of the uh, of the Space 2030 agenda at COPOS. And uh, we will be part of this discussion because we have, SRI is now an observer at COPOS. Uh, and, and, and we will do our best to, 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 put, to, to bring down our paper where a point per point review is uh, a critical review is made and we we will also uh, propose to add a, a fifth overarching objective uh, the, the space 2030 agenda has now four overarching overarching ag objectives and we will propose an amendment to add a, a, a fifth one that uh, yeah put together the main uh, <clears throat> uh, the main research strengths and the main policy uh, decision that should be taken in order to uh, to to open the frontier and to and to start developing outside in the cislunar uh, region and mm. the fact that the, uh, the cislunar economy is coming by the way because with the Artemis uh, program and with the and with the ILRS uh, with, by Ch China and other countries, uh, something will happen in the cislunar space, and this is uh, is uh, uh, somehow a public discussion that will will be on the table, even even if somebody doesn't like that it will be so public, but however it will be. Mm. And we think that uh, there is very much to say about that because, uh, yeah, we know that uh, for sure NASA, for instance, uh, yeah, it's, of course, it's a great decision to, to decide to go to the moon and remain. And uh, so not to repeat the Apollo, just to be <laughs> quick and simple. But what do they want to do on the moon? I, we believe that they want to make a, a, a new ISS in the moon. Yeah. So an astronautical settlement with uh, rotating crews. So we are not talking about uh, uh, the seed of a living place on the moon. Because okay, if 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 it's very simple, if you think about rotating uh, crews like uh, we do now on ISS, then it will be probably not so important to face the uh, the big problems of a settlement. I mean, if you stay there for six months, you can probably tolerate. The radiation that we will uh, take that on the moon are, uh, uh, on the moon are not that high as in 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 open space they are a little bit uh, lower okay it's higher than inside the van uh, the van Allen belt uh, but um, you can also think that uh, with the uh, with uh, a, a a medium protection you can uh, have uh, small damages stay and then also think that astronauts are military so it's very bad to say but the life of military is somehow spendable and that's very bad because we have to start to think to bring civilians into into space and bringing civilians in space means to think about their life and health 
and yes. uh, even for uh, for a long uh, residence in space. So if you stay there, you you have to be sure if you go to work there, uh, your rights, your civilian rights, civil rights should be assured. The health and the possibility also to reproduce yourself without having uh, bad damages to your DNA and, and so on. So, uh, yeah, the shift of paradigm from, from uh, exploration to settlement is probably going on. It, init it is initiated, but it is not that fast as it should in order to uh, to face the problem, the social and economic problem that we have on, mm. on, on Earth. So this is this is why we are uh, okay. We are pushing towards civilian space development, putting the, the emphasis on on the, the civilian characteristic on the of, civilian. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think it's 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 such an important part of the puzzle because as cost of access to space comes down it just opens it up to everyone on earth yep. um but when it comes to the united nations you know and the broader global community there's obviously quite a lot of non-spacefaring nations yeah so how you know what leadership do companies like america china europe russia you know how do spacefaring nations do they bear a responsibility to bring everyone to space so everyone can benefit from what it unlocks? Yeah, definitely. We have, we, the, the so-called advanced world, the, the so-called first world, have a great responsibility because, mm. uh, uh, yeah, it is true that there are uh, many countries that don't even have a space agency and they don't know what to do in space. But it is also true that a growing number of countries want to enter COPOS. And in mm. COPOS, actually, there are more than 100 countries. So it's more than 50% of the 194 uh, UN state members. And many of them, about, I uh, don't remember exactly, I think about 18, a uh, little less than 20 of these countries, don't have a space agency yet, but they want to be in COPOS. They want to learn, they want to develop their capacities. And uh, what I think is that uh, the, let's say the space pioneers, the, the, the space ferry countries should not deny their know-how, their experience, uh, they should help these uh, not yet space firing countries to develop their capacities. And I, I borrow a statement by Amartya Sen on this uh, uh, subject because, okay, Amartya Sen didn't talk about space when say that, he talked about globalization. But mm. I think that the, the similitude is very uh, clear. He said that the problem is not to ensure the poor countries to have something, some crumbles from the big dinner of the of the rich. No, the real problem is to be to ensure that they can have the same opportunity, the same the fair opportunities to enter the big market and the, and the, and the. Uh, the business opportunities and everything. And this is only a matter of building capacities because brilliant minds can have birth everywhere. And we, and we don't know how many new Einstein and Mozart uh, are having birth in the slums in, in the bidonvilles around the world and they will never have a possibility to develop their intelligence to 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 rise to to higher social levels so this this is the point but but okay as a as a humanist i think that is not only a moral duty but it's is convenient because 
the bigger the number of thinking minds, intelligent minds, the higher we can fly, the higher mm. goals we can postulate, because the number is important. So the fact that we are 8 billion now is the greatest richness that humanity never had, if we will be able not to waste that. Because it's, yeah, it's important. Yes. This is the important Absolutely. thing. Yeah. Yes, it's it's a it's a great summary, um, and I I suppose that makes a lot of sense with your your mission um, to you know to add this eighteenth SDG goal. It makes a lot of sense because all the other goals are about every aspect of well most aspects of our lives that everyone you know is affected by, and that equity in opportunity you know, to prioritize space so that space is truly for everyone. I agree, it's really important. And uh, I look forward to uh, doing what I can to, to get that done. How, how can listeners get involved with Space Renaissance International and support your mission? What, what can people do who are listening to this who want to find out more? Uh, sorry, can you repeat? How? How can how can listeners get involved with Space Renaissance International and support your mission? Uh, you, you mean uh, how can 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 people join us? This is the question. Yes. Oh, it's, yes. it's very simple. It's very simple. Uh, there is a form in our website where you can uh, register as a member. Start paying twenty four euros per year if you are not uh, work, uh, working people. Let me say. Or if you are a student, uh, is half, so only 12 euros per year. So everybody can join. Everybody is very welcome. No need to be scientists. No need to be scholars of any discipline. It's enough to be curious and to feel the, the need and the urgency to help the Renaissance, to help the space Renaissance. Yes, that's it. The only condition. We don't ask for any curriculum, any kind of... Uh, previous preparation. We have an internal Good. academy where we can uh, we are developing uh, the concepts and uh, uh, who wants can, uh, of course, uh, uh, learn and also contribute, because I think that everybody, even if it is even if they are not uh, learned people, they can always con contribute something. And uh, so, yeah. We are, we are exactly. ready, ready to, to teach, but also to learn. Exactly. The power of the hive mind. Yeah. Um, well, look, I'm, I'm glad there's no barriers for entry because it means I can get involved. So uh, thank you very much for what you do and for your time. Thanks for inviting and, uh, me. Yeah, have a good day. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you very much. Ad Astra. <laughs>